Hey, what's going on everyone? Uh, in this video, I almost feel like my entire life has led up to this one. Uh, this is the Linux portion of a DevOps interview. This is kind of a random walk through a sampling of the kinds of questions you would see on something like this. Um, between the interviews I have given and the ones I've been a candidate in, I would say I've faced versions of these questions probably over a hundred times. They're just, they're really common, they're out there, um, and you will face questions like these. So without further ado, let's jump in and talk about Linux. And by let's jump in, I mean one last disclaimer. <laughs> I'm gonna assume that uh, the, the most basic questions have already been covered in a phone screen. Uh, if they haven't for some reason, uh, check in one of these corners for a card with a link to uh, a video that I made, which is like the top 10 most common Linux interview questions. You see them in almost every phone screen. Um, I'm gonna assume that these have been asked already, that the person has been vetted to, to like know the very basics of Linux. Um, but if not, um, I, do, I do cover some of them again. So uh, now without further ado, let's jump right in. So imagine you need to connect to one of your machines somewhere in the cloud. Uh, how would you go about connecting to that machine securely and getting a shell on it? Assume it's a Linux machine. So the first thing I'm looking for is whether or not you assume that there is a VPN involved that you need to connect to first. The second thing would be um, SSH is the standard tool that you would use to connect to remote hosts. I might dig in a little bit and ask, you know, what would the SSH command look like? Uh, how would you authenticate? Would you use a password? Would you use a key? I would try to get you to say as much of this as possible. I don't wanna lead anybody too much. Um, but just checking to see if they know, um, you know, that you probably don't want uh, root login enabled um, or password login enabled. So presuming that you've gotten yourself onto a remote shell, uh, I would now probably cover the absolute basics of Linux, just like a five second thing of how would you move to this directory? I would expect you to say CD change directory to that directory. How would you see what's in here? LS, you know, how would you see what directory you're currently in? Uh, PWD or, you know, looking at the, the PS1, you know, how would you copy a file from this directory to that directory? Um, just, just the absolute basics again, uh, very quickly, like, like just, you know, get this over with in about, you know, less than a minute probably. So you would just demonstrate that you knew those basics and then we would move on. Maybe I would ask you, now that you've copied a file from one directory to another, how would you maybe copy that file uh, to another remote host? or to the work laptop that you use to actually uh, log into this shell session. And I would expect an answer like I would use rsync to do that. I might ask a few questions about service management and say, say we're on a box that's running Ubuntu um, 18.04, how would you manage services on this box? And I would expect you to say something like, I would use system cuddle system CTL to manage services via systemd. Um, and I, I'll say, cool. like. If I ask you to turn on the Nginx web server uh, on this box, how would you do it? Uh, I would expect you to say, system cuddle start Nginx. Um, I might ask, what is the difference between en enabling and starting a service? And that would be, you know, starting it is a one-time event. Enabling a service sets the service up so that systemd will start it at boot time, uh, or really whenever is defined in the unit file. Sometimes I ask some troubleshooting questions like you know, the, very, the very basic level of um, how would you see how much disk space um, or, or space on the file system uh, is taken up? How would you see what all the files in var log are taking up in terms of disk space? Um, those are things like df-h or du-sh. Uh, I might ask about mounts uh, that's in the base Linux basic questions video, but that's not super important. There's not a ton of devices that get mounted in on most um, cloud machines once they've booted. So it's getting less and less relevant. How would you find the primary IP address of the ETH0 interface? Stuff like this is so basic that you'll find it in the basic Linux questions. And you might get similar questions about, you know, what's, uh, what's your default route? What's your default gateway? So as we move on through these basic questions, we go to slightly more open-ended questions. Uh, you know, I'm comfortable that there's the, the absolute basic stuff is covered and there's no huge gaps. I like to ask, what exactly is an init system? 
this is a good question just to see if they have a handle on what init actually does. Um, obviously the, the elephant in the room is system D. I expect you to know the basics of what that is, how it works. Um, just the, the fact that init is kind of the, the first real process, a special process that the Linux kernel starts, that um, init is responsible for starting all of the services, all the units you expect to have running. Init is responsible for reparenting orphaned processes. And in, in the process of this, I expect to kind of talk with you about the basic components of system D um, or the, init, uh, the modern init system, system D. <laughs> Uh, that you've interacted with. So this conversation would naturally expand to a few different chunks of system D, um, verifying that you know that journal CTL is how you uh, deal with logging and so on. It's a bit of a trivia question. It's just like fun. I wouldn't put too much weight on this, but I like to sometimes ask what a Linux user is made of and see kind of how they understand uh, Linux users. To the, if they understand that it's really just an entry in a few different text files, you know, in your Etsy group, your Etsy shadow, your Etsy password, that users are actually made of very little on the file system. Um, it's, there's less magic there than people expect. And that kind of leads into this discussion of um, the kind of the, the interesting thing about Linux or the magic of Linux is that it abstracts everything into uh, files, which naturally leads itself to the next thing I'd love to talk about, which is proc, the slash proc file system, you know, subtree, uh, which is the kernel state uh, reflected as a file system tree, which is like such a trippy idea. I mean, it's such a cool idea. And I think it's like the one of the core things that makes Linux so awesome uh, or just so, so interesting. Um, and talking about that a little bit. And then I'd love to ask, you know, what do you know about proc? What can you do with proc? I expect to hear some high level version of that. I don't expect that everyone is excited, as excited about proc as I am, but uh, you know, I expect people to know that they can find like information about processes in there, the arguments that something was run with, the environment that it was started with, uh, a bunch of, bunch of interesting stuff, which is very helpful during troubleshooting. If things are getting too technical, I might ask you if you're troubleshooting a problem and you get stuck or don't know where to keep going uh, or just get really frustrated, where do you go to look for answers? I've made videos on this before. I, I basically expect to hear some combination of like man pages, uh, stack overflow, general Googling for troubleshooting threads, the official documentation, uh, not in that order exactly, but <laughs> some combination of that. Um, and it's just good to talk about troubleshooting process and um, you know, if they have any tricks, might be useful to me. So now we're getting into more free form questions, much more open-ended questions. The idea here is to really, for me to kind of see your troubleshooting skills and kind of let your, your skills shine a bit. So I like to set up a problem that goes something like this. I log into a machine the way that you just logged into this machine here, and I find a weird process name. I come to you, I say, I found this weird tutorial Linux process. Can you help me find out more about it? Uh, I might structure this problem like you have a performance issue a weird process is hogging all the CPU or all the memory, so, you know, whatever. Can you gather some information about this process? This is a question that's nice and open and uh, it just lets me kind of see how you would approach a problem. I'll just answer it in the most general way here. There's a million things that I'm not mentioning, which you could say, and those would be valid answers. I would expect troubleshooting to include things like top, H top, A top, you know, one of the tops to see kind of resource usage, if that process is hogging anything, uh, any particular resource. I would expect you to uh, look for the binary. I would expect you to look for a config file if it's referenced and easily visible. If it's not visible, I would expect or like to see you start poking around in slash proc to see what that command was called with. I would love to see you use LSOF to explore uh, what file handles or network uh, sockets the process has open. And speaking of networking, I wouldn't mind seeing some, you know, net stat or SS output uh, just to see what this thing is trying to bind to, what it's doing on the network, what it's connected to. Another nice open-ended question that I occasionally like to ask is, aside from disk space or file system space, 
What are some other things that could prevent you from creating a file? And the answers, uh, there's a ton of answers to this, but some of the ones I expect are, you know, incorrect ownership, incorrect permissions in the directory that you're trying to create the file, inode exhaustion, if they get into inodes, I love that. Um, I love to ask, uh, what are inodes? If I didn't, if I knew very little about Linux, how would you explain inodes to me? And I would love to hear that inodes are uh, kind of Linux data structure that uh, contains information about files. Um, we could talk about how inodes or when inodes get created, because it does come up occasionally in troubleshooting. When you have small cloud instances, you're not in charge of uh, creating the file system initially, uh, which is when inodes, the amount of inodes is determined. So if you have some lo process logging a million tiny files on a small file system, you could run out of inodes. And that's like a weird issue to debug, right? It's like, cannot create file, but then you look and there's plenty of space. Um, so if you, if you don't know about df-i or what inodes are or how they work, then that can be very hard to troubleshoot. And I'll leave you with a final really open-ended question, which I just, I love letting people kind of shine. So say you're talking to someone from security and they ask you to roll out some kind of security related agent or daemon or what have you, some piece of software. It is a simple binary, a single binary file. Um, you can download it from some public web location securely. We can assume that it's all good. How would you go about rolling that out in environment X, say in our, in our staging environment? How would you go about it? And this is nice and open-ended. You, you might ask about, you know, what do you use for configuration management? How do you mutate uh, running or how do you modify running uh, infrastructure? You have a whole conversation about that. You know, do we use a configuration management tool to uh, mutate existing infrastructure? Do we uh, use a config management tool to create images with something like Packer? The other issue is state management. How would you say this thing requires a license key to work? Where and how would you store that license key? You know, do you bake it into the image? Do you write it onto running infrastructure because we modify things in place? Do you um, store it in some kind of uh, key value store or like secrets management store like vault or console um, you know etcd console vault it just gives you the ability to kind of like make up a little infrastructure um, ask a lot of questions about my infrastructure the infrastructure that you might be working on and i see it as like this cooperative exercise for us to design a little thing together kind of beginning to end it's like um, you know real a real devopsy kind of thing where you're responsible for writing some, some infrastructure code interfacing with like some build or CI or test stuff, rolling out some new instances or modifying existing ones. And again, it's like, I, I would supply you a fair amount of information uh, to make sure that you don't get stuck, to make sure you uh, can assume all the right things. Um, but you know, this is, it's generally not adversarial. Like I'm not trying to trip you up, um, but it's just a chance for you to walk through the process and for me to learn uh, about what you've done, kind of what you expect to run into, what you expect things to look like. So this has been a random sampling from, you know, Dave's big bag of Linux questions. I would love to hear and read uh, the ones that you find are the most interesting in your own life, the ones that you've come across. Uh, please leave some comments below with your favorite Linux questions uh, or the ones that tripped you up the most or scared you the most or surprised you the most or the ones that you had the most fun with because as you can tell I got a little bit excited about some of these because the stuff is fun it's interesting to think about it's fascinating to know about and learn about so yeah I'm excited to hear what you guys come up with thanks again uh, if you haven't subscribed and hit the bell yet I would love for you to do that and uh, I will see you in the next one peace